This video is the work solutions to the 2017 Level 3 Calculus paper for integration. So question 1a asks us to integrate sex squared. That is something that is on your formula sheet. The integral of sex squared is tan. So this becomes tan 2x from the sec. And then we need to do 4 divided by the derivative of what was inside there. So 4 divided by 2 gives us 2 tan 2x plus c. For part B, we've got um, a graph that we're given here, and we need to find the shaded area on this graph. So we need to integrate that function between 1 and 4. So first of all, we're going to simplify that, and then we integrate it, raise the power by 1, divide it by new power, and then substitute in values, giving us the final answer of 9.5 units squared. Part C is a kinematics question, and if you integrate acceleration, you'll get velocity. So if we want the velocity of this, we need to integrate our function of 1.2 times the square root of t, which gives us 1.2 t to the 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2, plus c, and if we just straighten out that, tidy it up a bit, we get 0.8 t to the 3 over 2. Oops, 3 over 2. Okay, now we're also told that the velocity is 7 when t is 4, so we can work out what c is. And if we work that through, we get that c is um, 0.6. I seem to have run out of room a little bit, but the next thing, I'll just squeeze, squeeze this up a bit, then we want how far it went, so we want the distance travelled, so the distance we can do by um, integrating the velocity. And we get um, this one here. Now, it will have travelled zero distance at um, t equals zero. After no seconds, it would have traveled zero distance. So actually, c would be equal to zero if we substituted that in. So now we can work out the distance it's traveled um, after nine seconds by putting nine into this with c equal to zero. Next, we have a fairly straightforward one to work out the value of k. So if we integrate 3e to the 2x, we get e to the 2x. Um, and then times it by 3 over 2, we need to divide through by the 2 that's in the power up here of our integral. Um, now, if we do that between 0 and k, we will get an answer of 4. So we get 3 over 2 e to the 2k minus 3 over 2 e to the 0 is equal to 4. Well, e to the 0 is going to be 1. We could take out a factor of 3 over 2 e to the 2k minus 1 is going to be 4. And we're just going to carry that on now. Okay, and on part E, we've given, been given this function to work out the mean value of um, uh, this graph below. Uh, we're told that it's the graph of y equals sine squared x, and we want to find the mean between 0 and pi. So uh, the first thing is we're going to write it in this form for the integral for the working out the mean value so using this formula up here so for this we're going to need to integrate um, sine squared which is not straightforward to integrate but we can use the formula sheet to help us get something that is so if we use these formulae here we can use um, this one and rearrange it so that uh, we've got sine squared is equal to half of um, 1 minus cos 2x, and that is something that we can integrate fairly straightforward. Okay, so this becomes 1 over 2 pi, taking that half outside. Uh, 1 integrates to x, and cos 2x integrates to half sine x. Now we'll substitute in the values. And that gives us a final answer of a half. 
Right, question 2a, first of all, if we take out the 6, we get the integral 1 over 2x minus 1 dx, for which we use the natural log. So 6 times um, the natural log of 2x minus 1, and then we need to divide by the um, derivative of that x value there, so it'll be a half of that. So we get 3 natural log 2x minus 1 plus c. Uh, part B is the reverse chain rule, so we need to first of all raise that power by 1, divide by the new power, so 1 over 5, but also um, divide it by the um, derivative of the inside, so dividing that by 2 as well. So we end up with 1 over 10, 2x minus 5 to the 5 plus c. All right, part C, we're finding this shaded area. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can do this. I'm going to do it by, first of all, finding the area of this triangle here, and then taking away the area under the curve um, that would be this bit here. Okay, so first of all, the triangle, and then the area of the curve will be from 2 to 5. The equation for that curve um, was up here. So minus x squared plus 3x plus 10. And we integrate each of those terms as follows. Right, substituting in the values. That gives us uh, 22.5. So the shaded area will end up being 49.5 square units. Part D's got the graph of sine 3x cos 2x, which means we are going to need to use our product rules that look like this. Um, find the area enclosed between the curve and um, the lines y equals 0, x equals 0, and x equals pi by 4. So we're finding this area here, which means we need to integrate. Now to simplify that, we're looking for the um, product rule that um, does sine then cos. So we've got a, a sine cos here. Now this is a two times that thing, so whatever we put in is going to be half of um, the the rest of it. So this, this bit on the side will be equivalent to half of um, sine a cos b because we haven't got that two at the front over here. There isn't a two there. So we need to put the half in there. Okay, so we've got a 3x and a 2x, so it will first be sine of them added together. So that's sine 5x plus sine of 3x minus 2x, so that's sine x. And then we're going to work that through. For part E, we have got kinematics, and we are looking for... Um, we want to find the velocity, so we need an equation for velocity. To get um, velocity, we integrate acceleration, so we will integrate this 20 uh, ln t over t. Now, the tricky thing with this one is recognizing that we've actually got the reverse chain rule here. So this is 20 times 1, 1 over t times natural log of t, where this 1 over t part here is the derivative of the natural log. So when we differentiated whatever function this came from, um, this 1 over t came out of differentiating the natural log of t, which means that if we started with the natural log of t to some kind of power, which it would need to increase by the power of uh, the, the original power here is a, is a power of 1, so this must be increase that power by 1, and we get 2. Now, if we tried to differentiate the natural log of t, of t squared, if y was equal to natural log t squared, we would differentiate that to uh, be 2 times the natural log of t multiplied by the derivative of the inside, 1 over t. So we would get 2 over t ln t. That's very close to what we had here, but we didn't have 2, we had 20, so it's, tw it's 10 times bigger than what we already had. So this will be 10 times the natural log of t squared plus c, and you can differentiate that to check that it goes back to that, and that is the reverse chain rule that's helping us to do that one. It's not so obvious to see that one at the beginning, to think about how you would go about 
integrating that, that natural log of t part. Next, we can substitute in some values. So we've got the velocity was 12, 1t is 4, and that will help us to work out c. So uh, we've got 12 equals 10 natural log of 4 squared plus c. And we're not going to be able to keep that tidy. It's going to end up being a decimal. So c is equal to minus 7.218. OK, then uh, find the velocity after 10 seconds. So when t equals 10, v equals 45.8 by putting it back into um, that formula. And the last thing is just to put the units on it. So velocity, um, that's speed. We're measuring that speed in meters per second. So meters per second. OK, nice, easy integration to start us off with. Uh, question three. And there's your final answer. Part B is about the trapezium rule. So it's about taking this formula that we have from the formula sheet and substituting in the values for this question. So we've got the area is approximately equal to half times the height, which we don't even need to work out the height. They've given it to us. It's two. Um, our first uh, y0 is nothing. This, this value here starts at 0. Um, our last one is 12, and then 2 times all of the ones in between, like so. We've got this curved border for part C. Uh, we want to find the area of the, this shaded region where y is equal to this equation we've been given. So we will integrate from 1 to 11 of that function. And the first thing to do is a little bit of algebraic juggling to get this into a, uh, to change that fraction into something we can actually deal with. At the moment, we can't integrate that. So on the top, if we put this in terms of something times the x plus 2 that's on the bottom, this would give us 15x plus 30, but we actually want it to be 15x minus 15. So if we did that, that would come out to a plus 30. So we need to subtract 45 to make it equivalent. And that's over x plus 2. So that we can now separate into uh, 15x plus 2 over x plus 2 minus 45 over x plus 2. This x plus 2 cancels with this one. So now we're just integrating 1 to 11 of 15 minus 45 over x plus 2 dx. And working that through gives us 84.02 meters squared. For part D, we need to solve this differential equation. And first, that means separating the variables. So bring the y's to one side, the x's to another. And then integrate both sides. So we have the natural log of y on this side. This was, uh, that would have been x to the minus a half there. So in fact, I'm going to rewrite that x to the minus a half. Um, if we integrate that, we get x to the half divided by a half. So it's 2x to the half plus c. So then we can use um, our values here. So ln of 1 equals 2 root x, which is 2 root 2 in this case, uh, plus c. So c is equal to, actually we'll just go back, my brain worked faster than my hands then, 2 root 4, x um, is 4 there. So 2 times the square root of 4, which is 2, so that would be 4, and ln of 1 is 0, so therefore c is equal to negative 4. So therefore, our equation becomes ln y is equal to 2 root x minus 4. So y is equal to e to the 2 root x minus 4. And finally, for part e, um, we are sat working out this differential equation. Um, the end point is find the value of y when t equals 5. So we need an equation that's y equals something. So to get that, we need to integrate this function up here. So we can get y equals. Now to integrate this, recognize that this part at the beginning is the derivative of this part up here in the e. So um, it's a bit of a reverse chain rule happening again. So y equals 
or rather if y equals e to the sine 0.5t, what would that give us? If we differentiated that, we would end up with e to the sine 0.5t multiplied by the derivative of sine 0.5t, which would be half um, cos 0.5t. So given that that came out to half, uh, if we wanted to make that the, the whole number of one of those things rather than half of those things, we would need to start with two times that size to counterbalance that half that came out and then put the k in, which is a constant. So actually we need it to start with equals 2k so that we end up with the k in there as well. So therefore, integrating it gets us to this point here. And then we go through substituting values because, of course, that has a plus c. We can work through um, what the value would need to be and um, get to our final answer, and I'll work that through now.